over what? Oh, there's our Satchel. Oh, don't be so sad. <laughs> Bing's Built, protected by Amsoil, with support from Roadster Shop and Nitto. So, where did the engine come from that's going into Lockjaw? Well, it came off this rack. <laughs> and there were four of them here. Came out from Duramax. They're 2021 engines as shipped from the Duramax assembly plant to the assembly plant for the truck. So they're called engines as shipped. And they're pretty complete. Just looking at the thing, I, I can see a lot of stuff that'll come off the engine. Now where, where else have we used these engines? Monster truck engine development, the killing a Duramax series, uh, camshaft development for this Lockjaw project, lots of stuff. And you guys have probably seen a whole lot of the video of all that stuff already. More to come on Killing a Duramax and all the other projects though. So we start with this engine as shipped. And the first thing is kind of obvious on this, if you've never seen a 2021, but you're familiar with Duramax, is there's two belt planes. The rear belt plane, which is all this stuff, is the conventional belt plane. This pulley, which bolts to the vibration damper, this pulley, and this tensioner, those are to run nothing but the fan on the engine. What they did was they amped up the cooling capacity and they amped up the oil cooling capacity. We'll look at that from the back end. You can run one of these at 36,000 pounds trailering weight. That's pretty astounding. I mean, to me, it's almost, you know, are you, are you kidding me? But the engine has to survive that. So that's some of the support systems. We've been looking at those support systems as we've been doing the Killing a Duramax series. And we've been upgrading beyond this where necessary. But all of this front end, the thermostat system, it's duct casting, all of the mounts for air conditioning, alternators, all of that, all of this goes away, including the vibration damper. There's nothing left on the front of the engine. Then we come over here. Here's the air intake and the intake manifold in the engine. Now, if you look at that, it kind of looks like a giraffe if you see the, the legs and the legs and the head down. We call that casting the sad giraffe. Well, the sad giraffe goes into the scrap pile. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's quite a bit of EGR plumbing here. So all of that all the EGR control mechanism, all of it comes off. I think we can move around to the back now. Okay, so here, up here you see the variable geometry mechanism, the outlet of the compressor on the turbo with a red cap on it. Here's the EGR cooler and control valves, etc. Here's exhaust gas coming up off the exhaust manifold below. And here is the first emissions device other than the EGR itself. This cat bolts right to the back of the turbocharger. And there you have the downpipe. So all of this also goes away. You know, people talk about, oh, Banks, he's really big into this whole thing with the emissions. And, and by God, I am. Uh, I'd rather do it legal than illegal. Uh, and have been. <laughs> this engine will have no emissions equipment on it. it. You know, I mean, every racing engine we do, every pre-emissions vehicle engine that we do, has no emissions equipment on it. We won't have a DPF on here. So you've got to tune the engine so it doesn't smoke. In other words, even with the emissions equipment gone, we're still clean tuning this engine. It will be free of emissions. And when you see the intake manifold, the supercharger, et cetera, you'll see what's going on there. We can tune these engines to a nominal level called Euro 3, uh, which cleans them up quite a bit. And uh, 
I intend to do wherever possible. Now, this is an older standard. It doesn't require emissions equipment if you know what you're doing with the tuning. The mate to this engine has already been pulled out of the rack and taken over to Mike. So why don't we go over and see where Mike is at with the engine now? Ah, okay, what have we here? We have a blower pulley machined on the OD of our damper assembly. <laughs> And then we decided it wasn't big enough. Not enough. Yeah, it's like, come on. This looks cool. Bolts up to the pattern on our... There's your Raider yeah. mag. Well, it's a Raider mag, isn't it? <laughs> Anybody out there old enough to know what a Raider mag was? Because you got one right here. This would be for those little cars that are made up in Malaysia. <laughs> you know, that, that size wheel, what is that, about a 12-inch wheel? Bolt right up, yep. yeah. Yeah, bolt right up. Yeah. Six log, yeah. Uh -huh. By the way, this is the stock drive plane, and it's 10% smaller in diameter than a stock vibration dampener uh, setup. And of course, this is a timing wheel. L5Ps do not have a front trigger, they have a rear trigger, but when, when I'm doing a crankshaft to go into one of these, and we're building another engine right now with one of our cranks, one of our big pins, I wanna move that trigger up here so I can have a full counterweight on the rear of the crank, which you can't have if there's a timing wheel there and you've machined the counterweight to mount that timing wheel. So there's arguments for having them there and here. If the crank is strong enough and the vibrations aren't that high, I'm okay with having the timing wheel here. So we've made a setup that puts the, the stock sensor uh, into place a little uh, I don't know if it's a casting or billet piece. We won't be using it here. This is a, the stock L5P that came off the rack. This is Banks Red, by the way. It's a new color that Cerakote will be introducing at SEMA here, 20, 2021 SEMA. It's got a little uh, gold flake in it. I wanted to warm it up a little bit. We went through so many versions <laughs> of Banks Red. Uh, this is the new Banks Red. A couple of things that are going on inside the engine are over here. First of all, this is a second design camshaft. A while back, I did a program on the first blower cam for a diesel engine, specific blower cam. And it was a nominally 400,000 slip. It would accommodate the stock valve springs and all of that jive. So we ran it with stock valve gear and we picked up airflow and therefore some power, but I wanted more. So I got with Billy Godbold again at Comp, and we went through a lot of iterations to come up with what's in these boxes. Uh, and we've already ran the whole CAM development program. So I'm dying to call Billy before SEMA, because we'll, we'll never get to talk at SEMA. Anyhow, this is a 500 thousandths nominal lift. So we went from 400 to 500, but we had to do a valve spring because I'm trying to get GM to put this Banks cam into the engine on the assembly line. And it has to have all of the OEM earmarks. We needed a new valve spring because at 500 thousandths nominal lift, you're coil binding the valve spring and bending the push rods. Working with Billy, once again, we developed a new valve spring. It's got the correct diameter top and the correct diameter bottom. It fits with the seal and spring alignment piece that's factory and it uses the factory retainer and keeper assembly. So, and it's good for a lot more RPM. So it does a whole lot there. And then we've been working with Trend on push rods for this puppy. So this engine has these trend push rods in. More diameter, more wall thickness. It's one piece so that the lifter engagement is, is not an inserted piece, but formed out of the tube. And then it's got a rocker arm ball cup pressed into the top. And we've been running these on the dyno. They're excellent. And I'm really working with the guys at Trend on what would go in the factory assembly as well at the plant. 
couple other things um, that we throw away. I talked about things we throw away. Well, we throw away the head bolts because we have to pull the heads to pull the lifters out and change the camshaft. So it's pretty major. Pull the front cover. You've got to pull two heads. And in the process, you end up with a whole bunch of not usable head bolts. Here's my point. In all our programs, all our Duramax programs, and we've been well over 1,000 horsepower, what do we put back in to hold the heads on? The same damn thing. We are running stock head bolts. What's that all about? You can get more wrenching pressure uh, with a, a, if you will, superior stud setup. But is it really superior? Is it really necessary? Well, it's not necessary in my book until I start blowing head gaskets. And we've had no head gasket problems, and we've been well over 1,000 horsepower with these L5P monsters we're building. If it comes that I think the studs would help, then we'll stud the damn thing. But until we have a failure, we won't. But let me talk to you about the system, the head bolt. The head bolt screws into the deck on the, on the block. The firing pressure tries to lift the head off the deck. To some extent, the head gasket has a spring back capability which allows it to follow the cylinder head when this occurs. I like to maintain that system. The guys that designed the L5P were quite aware of the system. What you get here is a little cushioning on the pull in the threads in the block. Guys fail the blocks around the around the head bolt threads. What the hell's going on there? Did, were you running a stud or a stock bolt? These are torque to yield, so you only use them one time. You don't reuse these. That could be a problem. But when I see the a cr crack radiating out of the head bolt threads in the block, in the deck of the block, I'm looking for, do they run the stock head bolts or is this a stud job? because the stud is less forgiving. So, yes, it will hold the head against the gasket with more force. But no, it won't cushion that impact, that sudden pull on the threads in the block. So the system moves. Making the system rigid sometimes finds an, another failure point. That's all I'm saying. And that's just my experience. What about the bolt that retains the vibration damper. Once again, we use the, the non-reusable GM bolt in the vibration damper. We've run superchargers. I mean, this will be the ultimate test. Uh, <laughs> we've got a lot of cantilevered load. Uh, the balance condition uh, of that guy uh, should be Zero. Yeah, should be. Or we go over on the balance machine and, and we zero balance the pup. I just want to make sure everything is balanced here. We know the damper assembly yep. is balanced. And we're doweled into the... Yeah, we don't know, yeah. About, we don't know about this guy. Yep. So we'll have to see. Uh, it never hurts, but something that's CNC'd that accurately should be dead on for balance. Other than this, which I can't take my eyes off of because it's so ridiculously huge. And it, blows, it runs this little tiny blower pulley, but it's a ratio of diameters. This diameter versus the other diameter. You take this diameter, divide it into that diameter, and you've got the overdrive ratio. It's that simple. So We got a lot in this engine. Yeah, we're looking for like four to one. We want to turn the blower a minimum of 16,000, 16,500. But I really think it starts getting into its own, more, more around 18,000 and they can run well above 20,000. That's why the ridiculously huge pulley down here. And the tiny guy up top. I, I, I really don't want to turn this more than about 4,400. That's about it for me. Uh, so, and the valve gear should be stable yep. with the, the new springs and even with this additional lift. This is the jewel, and Matt, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna allow you to, here's our intake manifold, and this is a two-use intake manifold. It allows us to insert the charge air cooler into the manifold and put a blower on top. 
or it allows us to put an, in, a, an inlet casting on top and run a turbo, compound turbos. This would be the final stage of charge air cooling. So if you had another turbo, then you have an inner stage or an intercooler between the first and second compressor. And then you have an after cooler here. So, but they're all charge air coolers. That's the term we use. So this manifold design allows us to be a bit modular. It does. Down the road. It does. And of course, this is the first one out of billet. Uh -huh. uh, and you know, there, there's gonna be in, in the lid, there's gonna be provisions. Uh, the lid is down at Mike Thermos's shop. What does he call his business? Nitrous Supply. Nitrous Supply. Huntington Beach, California. In Huntington Beach, California. Mike Thermos is the grandfather <laughs> of nitrous. And I think he's about as old as me. So he's been at it a while. Yeah, a long time. Let's go ahead and slide this into place. Now we're using some alignment dowels here, which are used in the stock setup, but only on one side. Be careful with this guy here. Yeah. Here we come. The snake under these lines here. Yeah. Dowel drop in. There we go. We're all happy. Great. You know it. To recap, compared to an engine is shipped, let's look at how this differs. We've got our custom fluid damper, Banks fluid damper on here. We've got our custom crank pulley. We've got our camshaft. We've got high performance push rods from Trend. We've got our own valve springs in here. We have got our really custom two piece intake manifold with charge air cooler integrated into it. Mm -hmm. We're running nitrous. We've got a 3.8 liter billet supercharger on the top with a dual inlet. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got 50 over custom injectors in it. And we've got some of the gnarliest headers you've ever seen on this thing. Absolutely. And those injectors from s, &S uh, might become hundreds. <laughs> yeah. They may be a hundred yeah. over. Especially uh, when we hit that nitrous. And yeah. also on some of the other projects, we ultimately limit out on this Denso pump. We give it more pressure in terms of lift pump. And these things run a nominal 60 PSI lift pressure, I think. Right. Uh, that's the upper limit mm -hmm. of stock. We found if we push to that a bit, uh, 70, 80, somewhere in there, as the demand goes up, not all the time. In other words, you'd have a pressure modulated or regulated lift pump pressure that goes with, with engine load. So at the upper end there, we hype it up a little bit. It does a little more work. But ultimately, the Bosch pump done by s, &S to replace this guy, that's the money setup. So we might end up there. We don't know how far we're going here. This is the first step. Well, we'll get it on the dyno and we'll find out. I can't wait to get this thing on the dyno, but first, it's gonna go in that truck and we're gonna bark it in the truck and then we're going to SEMA. It is Wednesday. And SEMA starts next Tuesday. Oh, I'm not nervous. Boy. <laughs>